Well, hi. I didn't notice you there. So, uh, I brought this up a while ago for many of you guys who might be here for my announcement, but this is going to be the first YouTube video on how I do the shoes that I do. I thought that, you know, I might as well start off with something a little bit simple in case you guys want to follow along because this is going to be how I do shoes. There's a fucking hair in my mouth. <laughs> and then I'm going to show you guys how I do everything. I'm going to be doing two shoes just because I thought, you know what, it's a little bit more simpler. These shoes don't really take me that long. I'm going to be showing you how I turn this to this. And then I'm going to be showing you how I turn this into this. Today, I'm gonna use some red, yellow, orange, and maybe even a little bit of white, just for protection. Now, I'm gonna be using two types of tools in this video. I'm gonna be using my airbrush gun, and then I'm gonna be using my paintbrushes today. In this case, it doesn't matter what you have. Anything can work. I just like using the airbrush sometimes, and sometimes I just like using my brushes. So, I just got a pair of these. Uh, a friend got them for me for Christmas, and I haven't opened them yet. But you can just get any type of brush, doesn't really matter, it doesn't have to be a specific type of one. And one more thing also, before we do anything with the shoe, we should always use some acetone, nail polish remover, it's the same type of thing, and some cotton balls, and I'm going to show you why now. So as we can see, I'm just getting the shoe all prepped up, nice and ready, placing it down, getting my acetone all ready. If anything guys, the acetone at the hardware store costs is about, mm, I want to say about 10 to $15, or sometimes six, depending on the size that you get. A regular nail polish remover, which I'm sure that everyone and their mama has, is the best option. All this is really doing is just taking off the factory primer that they put onto every one of these Air Force Ones. It's also exposing the leather to open air, so that way the paint locks in nice and tight. But one of the other most important things that you should always focus on too when you're doing a shoe is the taping. Now taping is a super important aspect as to when you're doing your shoes just because you don't want to have to get paint into those unwanted spots because then you'll have to go back and refix them all the time. And especially when you're using an airbrush gun, this paint will splatter everywhere guys, so it's always best to be safe than sorry. Now a lot of the times you're also going to be seeing that I use my X-Acto knife a lot just to get into those edges. This is just because I wanted to get into every little corner and bit that I wanted to get in so that way no paint seeps through. However, later in the video you're going to see how I make a couple of mistakes and how to fix them easily. So the next step to my process is what I always do is I check to make sure, you know what, okay, taping's pretty good, you know, I don't get the laces, I don't have to worry about this part or getting into this part of the process I'm going to be doing. But right now, the next tool that you should get is I would recommend getting one of these airbrushes. You can probably get these on for Amazon for about like 20 bucks. For the gun in general, the presser itself might be a little bit over 70, but it's totally worth it. But once we get our air gun ready, you know, it's all nice and clean, nothing's in the chamber. Take our red paint, shake it up a little bit, pour just a little bit in there. Then we're going to be wanting to get some airbrush thinner. The only reason why you're going to be wanting this instead of just shooting the paint straight out as it is, is because the paint is too thick, so you're going to want to get this thinner. I don't really know the science to explain it, but this just makes it thinner so that way it goes to the gun way more easier. We're just going to take a little bit of this. I got an old needle that I can use, start mixing it. Then after once we've mixed it, look how nice and liquidy it is instead of it being thick. I like to just test it out just to see if there's any passage going through, any clogs, anything that I need to clean up before I start going. So I just go into my hand. A little bit more spray right there, so we'll see how this goes. That's what we're gonna want. Go ahead and do it on the other side. So I just had to clean up a little bit of the spill right there, but we can see right here, I didn't really put too much paint in, or maybe I just put too much thinner in, and it kind of makes it give this lighter blendish kind of color. So all we got to do just to fix that, put a little bit more red in there. Not too much though. Mix it up one more time. And then we're good to go. One thing I would like to mention too is to also get a heat gun. If you have a hair dryer, anything else, it's probably the best just to use that. Use your resources. It's what I started doing. All you're going to want to do is take your heat gun, blow it on the swoosh just for a little bit. Move it on to the other side. 
Then after you put the first layer on, we're just gonna keep doing a couple more layers. It usually takes about three or four, usually three, but most likely it's gonna be four. So you can kind of see how the paint is getting a little bit more of a darkish kind of reddish color. That's because I just put in a little bit more paint because I put in too much thinner and it kind of made it a little bit eh, too thin as I wanted it to be, but now it's getting better. We'll just put a couple more layers on, move on to the next one. So after I've done all my layers and stuff, I finally like to take off the paint. But what you should always do before, 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 you always take off the paint. Hit it with the heat gun just one more time. You don't want any of that excess paint leaking through the tape, but if it does happen, I'm gonna show you, which is most likely gonna happen because it always happens to the best of us. We're just gonna hit it again. And then we proceed to take off the tape. All it is is the same process, just take your cotton ball, dip it in some acetone or some nail polish remover, however you want to refer to it, and just go ahead and take that off right there. And then it's all gone. Of course, there's always going to be other edges, and you're always going to be wanting to be making sure that you don't hit your design, so just be cautious when you're using this. Another tool that I use is just a Q-tip. I did this also in acetone. This is just so I can get into those little edges that my cotton swab can't reach into, just so that way I can get the nice and perfect edges ready. Now for any sticky situations where you might have over taped, all you're gonna wanna do is just take your paintbrush, use the same color that you had. I like to use the paint that I have left over. And then I just go in it again. This is why I say it's very important to remember how many layers that you put on your shoe, just because you wanna make sure that you're doing the same amount of layers because one spot might be a little bit too bright, the other might be a little bit too dark, but all you gotta do, remember it, or just eyeball it, might as well. Now that we've gotten everything done with the swoosh, we've done a couple of cleanups, made sure that everything was kind of a sharp edge. Now we're gonna be moving on to the tongue, the rear, and the side panels. There are two ways that you can be doing this. One, I like to either use a fine brush just because it's got a nice edge to it. You really gotta make sure that you maintain these, go along the edges. Guys, make sure that you take care of your brush. But for those who are really balling on the budget, because I know that sometimes these can go for about $6, $3, and if you really don't wanna be paying that much, use a toothpick. Guys, I've been using this for years. It still works for me, but I just like using my brushes because I pay for it, damn it. I'm gonna go ahead and move to the back and then I'm gonna do the tongue. Now for this part, I don't really find it as hard as any other part, but I really like to use the toothpick for any part of the heel or in the tongue, just cause I really get into the fine details and I don't really mess up with the brush or I don't worry about another piece of the hair just sticking out and painting another side that I don't want it to be. But all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just go with the lettering with the toothpick and then go in with the edges right here, the swoosh with the toothpick. Now that we've gotten this part done, I'm gonna just move on to the last part and go ahead and hit the tongue. And there we go, you guys. I got everything done. We did the swoosh. We've done whatever the hell this thing is called. We've done the heel. We've done the toe. Now, if you don't mind, 
I'm gonna go to sleep because it's 12, 17 a.m. I have to be somewhere in the morning and I'm really <laughs> tired. I'll do the next shoe tomorrow. Oh my God. Now that I've got the other shoe done, I'm gonna go ahead and start working on the Jordan 1. So this next little tool that I have right here is a color wheel. This just helps me understand, you know, what types of colors I need to mix up just to make it match to the color that I'm trying to make, which in this case is the heel. All I had to do was just mix a little bit of yellow and a little bit of orange and then go ahead and apply the coats. Okay, now that we've gotten everything done from doing the outside and doing it to the inside, we can finally get rid of this and get into this. Now you might be asking yourself, what the hell is that that you got in your hands? It's a stencil actually. And you might be wondering, well, why the hell did you do that? Why can't you just paint over it? Because it takes too much time and I don't really feel like doing it. All I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this and apply it onto there. I'll be doing a tutorial on how to do one of these in the future, but that'll be for a separate video. There we have it. It took me about four minutes to do that because uh, God forbid I would ever do this correctly. When I applied the, the heat of Hades, I don't put a little bit too much because I don't want this vinyl to go ahead and scrunch up, but you know what, we're just gonna put a little bit on. And then just apply a little bit of pressure into there. Now you might notice a little couple of details are missing, like this little dot right here, a little bit of dots in the A's. I take care of those at the end, usually with a black toothpick, and I just go ahead and dip it in since they're little dotty spots. Last thing we should always do with any of our shoes, I'm also gonna do this on the Air Force Ones too, is you will always, 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 always wanna put sealer in, usually just to make sure that everything is nice and tight in there, no scratches or scuffs. Go ahead and mess up the paint. It just, it really keeps it sealed in. I prefer to use Angelus acrylic finisher, but you can really also just use anything. I started off with this kind of sealer. You can usually get it at Hobby Lobby, but any type of sealer really works. And that is successfully how we make two pairs of shoes in the same day. I hope to do more better in uh, future videos when I make these. But you know what, I am pretty proud of myself. This is like the first time ever I've done two shoes at the same exact time and I've got them done at the exact same time. Because usually a lot of the times whenever I'm doing shoes, I like to take my time. I like to put, you know, a lot of effort into it. But since these were more simpler designs, I thought, you know what, what'd be a better video to show you guys than this? Especially where, like, you can follow along and do your own type of design. And uh, I'd say, yeah, you know, I've been really wanting to do a lot of videos like this for a while now. I just haven't really had the kick I really wanted to. I wasn't really so confident in my cinematography skills. Other than that, though, you know, everyone's got to start somewhere just as I did with these shoes. And, you know, what? hopefully... This can grow into a bigger thing with bigger designs and I no longer have to do this in my room. And I really, really want to go to sleep, so I'm going to go ahead and close this off. If you guys liked this video and really enjoyed it and want more of it, please leave a like down below. Subscribe if you want to also. Love you guys. Thank you for supporting me. Thank you for watching this video and I'll see you in the next one.